When Asaph was 40, he took to wife Judith, daughter of Beri the Hittite, and Basmat, or Bashemet, uh, daughter of Elon the Hittite. I always thought it was interesting that Asav would take a wife with the name Judith, or as you see here, Yehudit, as in like Yehudi. It almost is hinting that she's like Jewish or a Judahite, but this is like uh, kind of early for that type of thing. And what is Asav doing with a wife of that name? Uh, so I decided to look it up, and you guys probably think that I, like, search these types of things out with the Canaanites, but actually, it's the reverse. I just study and then notice things. So basically, they're, like, searching for me. Uh, it says that they were a source of bitterness to Isaac and Rebekah. Judith is a proper name. Yehudit can be taken to be an ad adjective, as in Yehudi. Um, she did not bear Esau any children, or at least any sons. Uh, in chapter 36, which we've gone over many times before, Scripture lists Esau's wives and children, but she is not mentioned. Uh, and they say this is because she didn't have any sons, uh, or some say any children at all. But Shemit is identified with Ada. We know we've heard this uh, name before on the channel. Uh, it says that they had two names, and there are many examples of this in the Torah, including even like tribes or nations. Uh, and this is quite amazing to me because look at what uh, Ibn Ezra quotes here or, or references. He says, uh, check his comments on Genesis 15, 19. Genesis 15, 19, we know that one very well. The Canaanites, the Canaanites, and the Cabanites. And then he says, to see their other names, uh, check out Genesis 10, uh, 15 to 18. It says, these all had two names as well. Very interesting. And of course, Canaan begot Sidon and his firstborn Chet. Or, um, and it says right at the beginning that these were daughters of the Hittite. Chet is the Hittite. You can see it here. Ada, who we just talked about, comes from Cain. She is one of the wives of uh, Lamech. Very interesting. She bore Yabal. He is the ancestor of those who dwell in tents and amidst herds. It's well known as well that Bashemet, or Basmat, bore Ruel. Who is Ruel? Jethro, or at least his father. Very interesting. So then, there's. Uh, we can also see, um, since we were talking about the Canaanites, who is Jethro, we have the Canaanites here as well. And if you continue to look at this line of Asav, Kanaz shows up as well. So we have the Canaanites and Kenizzites in Genesis 36 who come from Asav and these women. Kind of neat, but it goes on even further. And at the end, you'll see how it all ties together. Yehudit with another Canaanite woman. It's quite astonishing. So let's learn about these women just a little bit. And in the third year of Jacob's dwelling in Haran, Basmat, the daughter of Ishmael, Asav's wife, bore unto him a son, and, Ish, and Asaph called him Ruel. Ruel being one of the names of Jethro. Um, and it's very interesting. So we have Jethro there. And then, in the fifth year of Jacob's dwelling in Haran, Ye Judith, or Yehudit, daughter of Beri, Asaph's wife, died in the land of Canaan. And she had no sons but two daughters. The name of the oldest daughter was Marnit, and the name of the youngest was Puit. And when Judith died, Esau went to uh, Seir to hunt in the field. And this is what Esau does. Okay. Rashi on this uh, says Ada, she was identical with uh, Bashemeth or Basmat, and she was called Basmat because she offered spices as incense to idols. And you can see here, this is the word for uh, incense, 
but it's also the word for like shemaim, which is heaven. And if you put this bait in front of it, it's it's saying essentially you could easily read this as in shemaim. <laughs> anyway, o Oholibama is identified or as identical with Judith Yehudit. Asaph changed her name to Judith or Jewess. This is all before, way before Sinai, by the way, suggesting that she had abandoned idol worship so that she might deceive his father. Aha, uh -huh, so he changed her name, uh, both of them, to make them seem more acceptable to Isaac. On one of his hunting expeditions, Asaph came to Mount Seir, where he became acquainted with Judith of the family of Ham, and he took her unto himself as a wife and brought her to his father at Hebron. The Lord often defers or delays the happiness of the pious people, of the righteous people, while he allows the wicked to enjoy the fulfillment of their desires soon. And I've seen this before. Uh, rabbis talk about how you know, it's one of these things. Why do the good uh, suffer and the wicked seem to prosper in this world? One of the things they say is that for the wicked, the tiny little bit of good they may have done in their lives, they get the full payment for it here, whereas the pious people are just saving it up, saving it up for the next world. Esau, however, had purposely chosen his 40th year for marriage. He wanted to indicate that he was walking in the footsteps of his father Isaac, who had likewise married at 40 years of age. Esau was like a swine that stretches out its feet when it lies down to show that it is cloven-footed, like the clean animals, though it is nonetheless one of the unclean animals. So one thing about the pig, it has the, the split hooves. But it doesn't chew its cud, so you could easily mistake it for being unclean if you didn't know what you were doing. Until his 40th year, Asaph made a practice of violating the wives of other women. And then at his marriage, he, or he acted as though he were following the example of his pious father. Accordingly, the woman he married was of his own kind, Judith, a daughter of Het, or the Hittite. For God said, this one who is designed for stubble to be burned by fire, shall take unto wife one of a people also de destined for destruction. So they're kind of saying uh, the wicked tend to put on a big show. <laughs> Here Asaph put his hooves, showed his true colors. The name Yehudit teaches of drawing power for the letter Yud is a single point that is ready to be made into other letters. You'll notice that you can find Yud in every every one of the Hebrew letters. She had a gentle demeanor about her and seemed to be drawn after Yitzhak and Rivka. And the name Bash Basmat teaches of peace of mind from the word for sweetened. But this actually wasn't the case. Uh, it was all kind of a ruse. Now, this is very interesting. We have Yehudit, and there is another tradition of a, uh, a different Yehudit. There is a custom to eat dairy on Hanukkah in co commemoration of the miracle that occurred through such foods. Yehudit, the daughter of Yohanan, the high priest, fed the army general dairy foods. Listen to this. Does this sound familiar to you? This woman fed the, en the enemy general dairy foods and killed him after he fell asleep, bringing salvation to the Jews. Even though this story happened before the events of Hanukkah, Yehudit's act of courage emboldened the Hasmoneans later on, giving them the strength to rebel against the Greeks. Now, who, what, this story, what does it remind you of? A different woman from Cain. We know who that is. From Judges 4 and 5, it is Yael, the wife of Heber the Cainite, who killed Sisera in a similar fashion. And he said to her, this being Sisera, Give me, I pray thee, a little water to drink, for I am thirsty. And she opened a bottle of milk, dairy, and gave him to drink, and, he, and covered him. 
Then he said to her, stand by the door and make sure no one comes around. And we all know what happens after that. Then Yael, Hever's wife, took a tent peg and took a hammer in her hand and went softly to him and drove the tent peg into his temple and fastened it to the ground. For he was fast asleep from the dairy that he just consumed, so he died. So we have Yehudit, Yael, uh, both connected to Cain in some way, and they both do this same type of act, killing an army general, which would have been a, a massive disgrace for him. They wouldn't even want, like, a man like that would not want anyone to know that a woman killed him. It's very interesting. I'm still kind of uh, intrigued by this woman and how she got this name. So it, it hints that Yehudi, Judah, um, was a, a known name or title <laughs> or concept um, a long, long time ago. Going back into uh, mid-Genesis at the very least, which makes you wonder... How how long uh, had that title been around before the giving of the Torah? 